Let's see if the 16 GB version of the RTX 4060 Ti is a good option for a 1440p gaming PC build. I'm using the MSI Gaming X 4060 Ti paired with the Ryzen 5 7600X and the Gigabyte M27Q 1440p 27-inch 165Hz monitor. I must say that this MSI graphics card looks pretty good as part of this all-black themed PC build. If you're interested in building this PC yourself, then links to all the PC parts needed will be in the description below. Let's start with one of the most demanding AAA games to date, Hellblade 2. To begin with, we will be running this game at native 1440p resolution using DLAA and high graphics preset, which is the highest option available that also includes ray tracing. And right at the start, I can see that we are getting a 30 plus FPS experience here, which is uh, not very good to be honest, because uh, this isn't even the most demanding scene in the game. I wonder what will happen once we descend further into this forest because that's where the most demanding area really is and as you can see we are already getting 20 plus fps this is not good unacceptable I think so we do need to make some adjustments to those settings first let's try reducing graphics quality without using dlss or frame generation we'll be testing these frame rate boosting features later on and using medium graphics preset the performance is better we are now getting 40 plus fps in the, the worst case scenario which means that we will get even better experience once we enter an area that is less GPU demanding, like this one here. We are already close to 50 FPS. This is not bad. This is already playable for this type of game. Although not scenes will be like this one here, so we better get closer to 60 FPS even in the worst case scenarios. And let's see if lowering graphics preset down to low can help us with that. Unfortunately, that is not the case, because even using low graphics preset, we are still hovering at around 50 FPS in the worst case scenario. Oop, just dropped below 50, 47, 49. Yeah, this is a very GPU demanding game, but to be fair, even on low graphics preset, this game looks pretty amazing. I can't say that this is visually bad experience by any means. But let's see if we can get to a playable experience using high graphics preset and enabling DLSS set to quality. The image still looks nice and the performance is at well above 40. Oh, we're dropping, we're dropping closer to 40, 45, will it be? 41? No? Will we see that? 43? 44? Yeah, this is um, not ideal, but it's not bad. I could play this game like this, because this is a slow-paced game, and having 40 plus FPS in worst-case scenarios is okay. Because in other, less graphically demanding scenes, you will get above 50 FPS. Let's see what happens if we add frame generation to the mix. So DLSS is still on quality. Yes, this is much better. Take a look at that. 70 plus FPS in this area. And I wonder, will the FPS stay above 60 once we descend further into the forest? And we are currently using 7.4 gigabytes of memory. And indeed, the FPS stays well above 60. 69, 64, nice. This is good. Basically, you can use high graphics preset with the RTX 4060 Ti. You'll just need the help of DLSS and frame generation. And this right here is a pleasant experience. The game looks great and the image is fluid. Alternatively, you can disable frame generation 
keep the LSS on quality mode and set graphics preset to medium. That way you'll be getting close to 60 FPS in one of the most demanding areas in the game, which means that in other scenes you'll get 60 plus FPS. So you can still use these settings, lock your FPS at 60 and enjoy the game. Ghost of Tsushima is not as GPU demanding as Hellblade 2, so I think there is a good chance that we can run it at 1440p native resolution without the help of frame generation or upscaling. I've set graphics preset to very high and increased field of view to the absolute maximum. And in one of the most demanding areas in the game, we are seeing 50 plus FPS. Not bad, not bad. However, it's not consistent 60, so there's room for improvement. And even on the road, you can still expect the FPS to be hovering around 50. So we definitely need to do something about it to make sure that we are getting a consistent 60 FPS experience. Let's try DLSS upscaling set to quality mode. And right away, we are getting 70 plus FPS experience. This is the way to go, I think. Because uh, as long as we are getting 60 plus FPS, we can cap the FPS at 60 and enjoy the smooth experience. Another way to go about achieving that 60 FPS is to disable DLSS upscaling, use DLAA anti-aliasing and enable DLSS frame generation. That way we can get 80 FPS, very nice, fluid picture. However, we are using 9.7 GB of memory, but this graphics card has 16 GB, so that is not an issue, we have plenty. Controls latency feels absolutely fine. But now I'm curious, what kind of performance we can achieve with frame generation enabled as well as DLSS upscaling set to quality. And we are getting above 100 FPS from time to time, but uh, it's not consistent. Oh, that bear is gonna kill me. I think I need to get rid of it. I'm sorry, bear. It had to be done. <laughs> yeah, check it out. Well above 90 FPS, so you could use these settings and cap the FPS at 90. That's probably what I would do if I were using this graphics card to play this game. Let's give it a go. I'm using RTSS to cap my FPS at 90. Let's uh, go back into the game. And everything works fine. Let's uh, reset that FPS counter. Have a look at those frame time and frame rate graphs. They are now nice and smooth and I can feel it on screen as well. When you lock your FPS, the experience is much smoother and you can enjoy the game properly. I think I like these settings the best so far. But let's move on to the next game. Horizon Forbidden West is more GPU demanding than Ghost of Tsushima so I don't think we'll be able to achieve good results at 1440p native resolution without upscaling, but let's give it a go anyway. We are using very high graphics preset and field of view is increased to the maximum. Huh, this is actually better than I expected. Check it out. We are getting well above 50 FPS. Oh, we are dropping closer to 50 in this area over here, but this scene right here is a little bit heavy but there will be plenty more like that one in the game. So we better make sure that our performance is appropriate to handle those kind of scenes. Because check it out, inside of this town, 46 FPS. Yeah, <laughs> that's not ideal, is it? So I suggest we use DLSS upscaling set to quality. And this is much better. Take a look at that. 69 FPS, very nice, <laughs> but sometimes it does drop below that, so still I think we can manage to have a consistent 60 FPS experience 
using very high graphics preset and DLSS set to quality. And I think this is a very much enjoyable experience. The image looks nice and detailed. I have no issues enjoying this game using these graphics settings. Oh, check it out, we just had 58 FPS just then. So, yeah. There is still room for improvement, even if you want to lock your FPS at 60. It is not perfect. Let's add frame generation into the mix. And with frame generation, you can even lock your FPS at 90. Hmm. Although there will be drops below 90 from time to time, in my experience, it is fine. You can still lock the FPS at 90 and enjoy the game. But you'll definitely have a good time using these settings. In this particular game, frame generation as well as DLSS look good. Let's just go back to that same area where we had FPS dips below 60 previously without frame generation. And over here, yeah, it's all okay. It's just dipping below 90 from time to time, but it's fine. It's a good experience. And at the moment, the graphics card is using around 145 watts. The CPU 75-ish. I'm curious, what will happen if we cap FPS at 60? What kind of power consumption will we get? Look at that. 105 watts on the GPU. CPU plus GPU are using around 180 watts combined. Although, I'm noticing something. Hmm, controls latency is not good using uh, this particular configuration. I think uh, we're getting too many generated frames and uh, too few real frames, which is causing issues with the controls. Yeah, I don't like this, so let's try and resolve this issue. Let's disable frame generation. And without frame generation, using just DLSS quality, the controls are fine. They are nice and responsive now. And we're still getting that 60 FPS capped. Power consumption is around 75 watts on the CPU and 135 watts on the GPU. The system is consuming a little bit more power, but in my opinion it is well worth it if it means that we can have responsive controls. Because that latency was pretty bad, I did not enjoy the game like that. In conclusion, the RTX 4060 Ti is a decent option for 1440p gaming, However, as you've seen, if you want to play the latest AAA games at native 1440p using the highest graphics quality presets, then this is not it. This is not the graphics card you want. Because if you are going to use the 4060 Ti, you will have to rely on DLSS resolution upscaling and in some cases, like with Hellblade 2, you'll even have to throw in frame generation into the mix if you want that consistent 60 plus FPS experience. Personally, I don't see a problem with using DLSS. It's one of my favorite features. DLSS 3.5 and higher looks very nice, even at 1440p, as long as you're using quality mode. Gone are the days when resolution upscalers were bad. Overall, I think that the 16GB version of the RTX 4060 Ti delivers a good gaming experience on a 1440p monitor. And as for this particular Gaming X card by MSI, it is pretty good. The GPU temperatures are fine, staying at around 60, and it is nice and quiet. It gets my approval, and if you want to buy this graphics card or any other products featured in this video, you can find them and the links in the description below. Also, let me know what do you think about all this in the comments below. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video, and subscribe for more if you haven't already. It was I, Vadim, until next time.